Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first edition, and possibly the very last edition, of Life with Trey Jones. I am the aforementioned Trey Jones, and I would like to start by thanking you for joining us. And I would also like to thank myself for providing our theme today. Thanks, me. Now, a little bit about myself before we get started. I am a studious student at the University of Texas <coughs> at Arlington. And I am also an aspiring writer in the field of broadcasting, which is why I bring this show to you. For you see, the goal of a broadcaster is to inform the population and to operate in the public good. Plus, I kind of have to do this for my intro to broadcasting class. But, uh, you know, it's mostly the informing you thing. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get into the first thing you should know. Well, it's an election year, which means you should probably start caring about politics. But since I know a lot of people in my generation can be a little, shall we say, disengaged when it comes to that topic, we at LIFE are here for you with an update on the primaries. Now, the latest primary as of this recording was in Indiana, the, um, Hoosier State. Since the real news media does more than enough coverage of Donald Trump, how about we take a look at how the number two guy, and I do mean number two, Ted Cruz is doing. Alright, Teddy, tell me how Obama's gonna take away our guns and force us to get gay married in a Muslim mosque by a transgendered priest. America is the land that gave my mom, an Irish-Italian girl growing up in a working-class family, the chance to be the first in her family ever to go to college to become a pioneering computer programmer in the 1950s. I love you, Mom. Aww. You know what? I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if your colleagues think you're worse than evil incarnate. I don't care if your old roommate thinks you're a total a-hole. And I don't even care if your own daughter won't hug you. You're good people in my book, Ted Cruz. Good people. Even from a Montgomery jail, our voice for justice and equality rings out for the ages. America is hopeful, optimistic. America is kind. We are not boastful or mean-spirited. America is brave. We keep our word. And we believe in peace through strength. Hmm. Positive, inspirational, I guess maybe this won't be so bad. Americans are deeply frustrated and desperately want to change the path that we're on. We have economic stagnation at home and our constitutional rights are under assault. Under the Obama-Clinton foreign policy, Russia has emerged as a resurgent threat. China looks with a covetous eye on the lands of our allies in the region. A nuclear North Korea and a near nuclear Iran yearn to devastate our homeland. And radical Islamic terrorism unleashes an evil that threatens the world. Okay, I'm confused. Are we the greatest, freest country on God's green earth? Or do I need to prepare my underground bunker? Give me some direction, Ted. I'm lost, I'm scared, and I'm angry, and I don't know why. Will we rise to meet the challenges that face our nation on the international stage? Or will we withdraw and cower timidly from the world? Will we secure freedom of thought, expression, and religion for future generations? succumb to the tyranny of a political correctness and the temptation of racial politics and balkanization. I don't know, it seems to work pretty well for Trump. I mean, he's beating you. This is our challenge. This is the fight that falls to our generation. You know what? Yeah. He's right. Never surrender. Cruz, Cruz, Cruz! And so, with a heavy heart, 
but with boundless optimism for the long-term future of our nation. We are suspending our campaign. And so much for that. But hear me now. I am not suspending our fight for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up, Ted. You're done. You're done. Man. I can't believe he just abandoned us in our hour of need like that. He just didn't seem to be that kind of guy. I guess there's no one to stop Trump for getting his tiny baby hands on the nomination now. But wait, isn't there a third guy? Yeah, 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 Kasich. Sweet, reasonable Governor Kasich. It looks like you've coasted your way into being our last hope. And let that be a lesson to you folks. Fear and hate mongering works. I mean, I guess I know what I'm doing for my final exams now. We'll be right back. Here in the good old US of A, where we're also on the brink of total ruin, we have a two-party political system. So for a complete look at the Indiana primaries, I guess I should go ahead and mention the Democratic side. Senator Bernie Sanders beat out frontrunner Secretary Clinton in the Indiana primary. And oh, by the way, did I mention Hillary Clinton is still the frontrunner? Indiana fundamentally changed the race. Obviously, your delegate count is, is, it's going to give us a great deal of momentum because I think there are many in the media, like you and others, who have decided that the campaign is over. Well, I guess the people of Indiana did not quite agree with that assessment. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Is he trying to imply that the media has been discrediting him? We're way off base here, Barony, because everybody knows the media is nothing but neutral and fair in its coverage. I think that this is the question that just constantly haunts us, because all the polling shows Bernie's a winner in the general election against Trump, dramatically so. And, and, and yet, most people sort of think Hillary's a better, stronger candidate. Explain. Ah, you see? That's the beauty of good journalism. It knows how to ask the right questions. So why is Hillary Clinton perceived as a stronger candidate? I actually think that Hillary is a stronger candidate. Well, okay. Um. And you also can't discount <laughs> yeah. the fact that Bernie Sanders is a largely unknown quantity in the sense so that there has not been a single like him, negative ad against him. But they wouldn't like him if they he's knew more about him. Well, he's a placeholder. He's somebody who has not had negative ads against him, negative attacks. There are things that people that Bernie Sanders has written in the past that have not been dragged out in front of the public that Donald Trump would absolutely right. drag out. Right. And I think once you were to litigate Bernie Sanders, affirmatively litigate him the way that the Trump campaign would, his approval numbers would be very different. And why is Bernie a relative unknown? Do you know the answer, news media? Huh? Huh? News media that's supposed to keep us informed about our candidates? Do you? Hmm? 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 I give up. Let's move on. We here at Live aren't just about politics. We're about educating you on all the many important aspects of life. One of those being diet. The CDC released a chart late last year reporting the obesity rates for all 50 states. One guess for where the highest concentration of obesity is. That's right, it's the South and the Midwest, America's cream-filled center. Included among the top states with an obesity rate of over 36% are Arkansas and Mississippi, where they'll butter your biscuits and then they'll deep fry that butter and put it on a steak. On the flip side, among the least obese states were California and Colorado, with obesity rates of under 20%. Who knew we do so slimming? Regardless, we here at Life want to bring some relief to this growing epidemic. So we bring you this dietary segment courtesy of our correspondent, Trey Jones. Cooking full balanced meals is key to a healthy diet. But we're college students, ain't nobody got time for that. This is how to make a bowl of cereal. First, you need a bowl of cereal, of course. Next, you're gonna wanna make sure you got milk. Sure, you could have cereal without it, but why would you want to? Third, grab a bowl. Fourth, pour your desired amount of cereal and milk. But remember, you're on a budget.
finally, grab a spoon and dig in. Looks good. How exotic. Thanks, Trey. Cereal looks pretty damn good. You might have to give it a try. We'll be right back. Being a well-rounded citizen of the world means also understanding that it's not just about us. It's also about taking care of our environment. Kinda hard to live without a planet to do it on. Which is why I believe it's important to get closer to nature. Stay in tune with how Mother Nature's doing. That's why I'm especially proud that I was able to talk to my first guest on life. I'm standing here with the plants in front of the UTA sign and plants. I would like to know, what do you think of the weather? What an insightful interview. Well, next time on Life, will there be an episode two? Do you even care? Tune in next time to find out. But until then, have a nice life.